Some Papa Roach on the world famous K Rock, and we got Tobin and Jacoby from the band live in studio. What's going hey, on, fellas? Hey, what's good? Is, is that Jacoby? Is that coffee at six p.m. at night? It's cafe. Yeah. Uh, yes. Wow. This is Tobin's coffee, rocking it too. Coffee with Fiji water. Oh wow. Yep. That's some fancy stuff yeah, right sure. there. You're living it up. Oh, fancy pants, McGee on this. Yo, usually I'd be like, dude, you guys are crazy drinking coffee this late, but you had a busy day. You were in L.A., I guess, shooting a new video. Yeah. Yes. Just shot a video. We recreated a um, one of our old rehearsal spaces in this front of ours garage and uh cut of it just like punk in your face just like how we used to do it back in the day um little music video for this track called cut the line we're about to drop it on the first day of the tour to kick off the tour yeah. Tobin, when you're when you're like shooting that and it's like an homage there you know back to the early days does it bring you back oh super nostalgic yeah because like well i drank my first 40 in like 20 years today <laughs> and uh like well because like we we dress it up with all the posters of like bands and like things like that we remember having in our old rehearsal studio so we had like mr bungle posters social d bad religion yeah like man fugazi like all the stuff that we yeah. grew up on wu-tang, Wu-Tang posters flags. Yeah, yeah it was Wu- just like it it's cool. crazy and you guys just celebrated the 20th anniversary of infest i think what like a year or two ago oh uh, yeah yep. and that was a crazy record i think i performed i've gathered right like like last resort goes crazy and then you guys are kind of almost forced to like piece together that record to kind of put it out in like no time right well so the story the story is um, we we got a demo deal with Warner Brothers, and we recorded Last Resort, Broken Home, Dead Cell, and a couple other songs. And then our an- the A and R had gotten fired, and we we're like, oh god. So we sent the re- you know Warner Brothers got the demo, and they were like, ah, we don't hear it, we're gonna pass. And then uh, got a deal with DreamWorks. We whole the whole record was written already, and uh, we just went in and re- you know re-recorded all those demos, and then cut the rest of those tracks, finished the album, and then released Last Resort, and then it just went straight to the top. Yep. Dude, it was yeah, like, out of here. It was crazy. Yeah. That vi- is it Vice? Somebody did a doc on it. Yeah, it was like that fantastic, great. man. Yeah. yeah, that was great. What I do love about Papa Roach, and we'll talk because we have the guys here for the hour on K-Rock, is that as much as you guys honor your past, you're very, I mean, you embrace every new technology, yeah. every new artist that seemingly like, you know, messes with you guys. So we'll talk about you guys on TikTok. We'll talk about the tour a lot yeah. with Papa Roach. If you want to get at these guys, you can text us at 800-520-1067. You're listening to K-Rock. Jacoby from Papa Roach is playing air piano right now i'm air basing air piano and i'm just darking out dude. i'm dorking out <laughs> dark it out over here it is dark out like papa moon. roach you're like massive chili pepper stands oh yeah dude <sighs> i'm a pepper chili. head bro yeah i think i think it's like it's i'm at that point right now where i need to get a chili peppers tat really like i think what would you get would yeah. you just get the logo or what would you get the, the original I'll, logo yeah. i'll just get like a a, a chili pepper on oh. fire yeah. Like, I think that would be cool. Oh, that's Instead they, of the regular logo. Were they like an awakening for you? Because the way that they combine funk and hip hop and rock and just so yep. many different sounds, like when you heard that as kids, were you just like, dude, yeah. this is what I want to do? Blood Sugar Sex Magic was the record that, like, I pretty much I learned how to play guitar and bass from that record. And I learned the whole thing front to back. Yeah. Crazy. I would go to Tobin's house and I would just, he'd be sitting like, he had this bedroom, his first floor bedroom, and he'd open the window with no screen on. He'd just sit in the window and just play, play along with this thing. And I'd just sit there on his bed like, Oh yeah, my dude, god! Slapping the bass. He could play all the flea parts, dude. <laughs> like, are you sure you don't? You want to be in? You want to be in the band with us, right? <laughs> yeah, we did a we did a pretty epic tour with them in Australia back in two thousand and two. It was yeah. like Chili Peppers, Iggy Pop. Like, yes, it was, it was crazy, dude. It, it was, was it stadiums. It was insane. It's insane. Yeah, it's insane. dream come true. And then and then the record company called us and they're like, "Listen, guys, you need to cancel the last four dates of the Chili Peppers tour and come home and get in the studio with Pharrell Williams for the Biker Boys soundtrack." And I'm like, "I am not leaving Australia with the Red Hot Chili Peppers." And then what do we do? We, we left. did. We left yeah, Australia we and we went left. to the studio of Pharrell Williams. What yeah. was it like working with a hip-hop producer like that at the time? Dude, it was so different, but Dope. such a great, like... I, first of all, I just remember Pharrell was playing back the music so loud. Yeah, my ears bled. <laughs> but it, yeah, dude, like, so we we did a track with um, Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas. Yeah. We did a track with Pharrell, and that was, like, our first big taste of working with, like... Yeah. The and they're dude, it's just a different level, it's just a different experience. But they're just so talented, it's yeah, so yeah. fun to work with. It was a great experience for us, a learning experience, and just a good time, yeah. And especially, it's like you know, years later, it's like I'm watching NERD out in like Lowlands Festival or, or no, Pink Pop Festival, and I'm on side stage, and Pharrell's over there singing. He looks over, he's like, Hey, 
How's yeah. that? I'm like, yeah, dude. Haven't seen you in like 15 years, but good to see you, bro. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, man, it's cool. But you know, it's funny. We had Shava from System of a Down on the show on Tuesday, and we were talking about what makes their band unique from other uh, contemporaries. I think what makes you guys unique is that that openness. Whether you were gonna work with Pharrell or even oh, yeah. like modern day, right? You guys are all over TikTok with yeah. the, with the with the, uh, with the antics, with the skits, and then even working with Swaco or working with Jarris Johnson. Yeah. Where does that openness come from? I mean, for us, it's like we're always embracing what's coming in the future. It, it helps us stay relevant. We have a passion for uh, creating music that is current and uh, that will captivate the youth. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, we utilize TikTok as, as an avenue for that. You know, yeah. we saw that kid Jerris, he just popped up and I kept getting these texts like from these people. Hey, check this out. Check this out. And then we were in the studio cutting uh, uh, drums for the record we're about to drop. And I was like, yo, I hit him up. I hit him, I slid in DMs. I'm like, hey, bro, come down to the studio, dude. Let's hang. And so he came down and I vetted him and I was like, this, he's a real one. What's up, dude? Let's let's take this track to the house and ended up uh, finishing up the track. And then we shot a video and now it's like he's one of our buzz. Like, oh, totally. He's our people. And, and Sweco, same thing. Like, we saw him popping off. And, uh, you know, he's just, he's, he's one of those up and comers that's got like, he comes from the punk scene. He came from the hardcore scene, but he had this crazy rap track called Fast. Mm -hmm. But it's like his heart was in rock and punk. And uh, we hit him up. Our producer, Colin, was actually working with him on a couple other tracks and hit him up, sent him this track, Swerve. And the next thing you know, it's like we got Jason Alon Butler from Fever on the track with P. Roach and Sweco. It's like phew, triple headliner. Let's go. Yeah. Ill Let's video, see. too. You can check out on YouTube if oh, you yeah. listen to K Rock yes. right now. I mean, we convinced, we've convinced Sweco Swerve. to get into a, 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 a what, like a little kiddie yeah. pool <laughs> yeah, you in the video. He didn't know what he was getting into when he showed up. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> we got more with Papa Roach coming up on K-Rock, including the tour that's about to kick off. Keep it locked. It's K-Rock. It's Papa Roach. Yeah! As What's you can up? hear. What's up? Kevin Kenny. We're in the house. And we're having some crazy conversations off the air. We got to, we, yep. you got to, Tobin, you got to tell me, we're kind of talking about what we're watching these days and everyone's watching the Kanye doc, which is incredible on, yeah. the, on Netflix. And your stepson is in the doc and are you in the doc? Yeah, I'm walking around in the background. Someone just sent me a video of it and they're like, check this out. And I was like, what? I actually don't have much of a recollection of it, but I remember being in the studio when we were doing that track with Pharrell. Yeah. I think Kanye was there. He was just getting started doing college dropout. And yeah, there's a clip of him talking to my stepson Aaron and there he's like you know he was just hyping himself up to the yeah. youth even back then you he's know? letting the kids know yeah that's just, just crazy me out. I watched it, I'm like oh my god that's Aaron when he was seven he's so yeah. cute Dude, crazy, crazy, crazy timestamp. We just got a uh, question from the uh, 562 area code. Uh, basically, this person is listening. His name's uh, Robbie, and he's about to drop his first ever song, it sounds like, from his punk band. Oh. And he wanted to know your guys' uh, recommendation on building and connecting with a fan base, which, I mean, you guys have been so amazing at. What would you say? I mean, you know, we started out doing fly. we go flyering back in the day, but I think those days are over. So it's like, just getting out, just pop it off on TikTok, man. Go to a coffee shop. Play at the coffee shop. Play every, play every show that you possibly yeah. can. That's the that's the deal for me. Yeah, like, do do all that fun underground stuff, and then just you know make connections with other artists and friends, like like minded people, and yeah, it'll it'll build. It you know it might be a slow build, but it'll be a good one. Were you guys skeptical of TikTok at first, or were you like, oh, dude? You, yes, you, I was like, what was the what was the moment where you like switched it for you? I was uh, sitting in a room with Jarris Johnson, and I was like, I was like, I don't know about this TikTok thing, man. Our management keeps telling us like, y'all need to get a you know, get on the platform and start doing your thing. And I'm like, I just don't want to be like dance monkey. Like, you know, it's not my <laughs> thing. And, and Jairus was like, that's not what it is, dude. Like, just imagine TikTok's a stage. How do you want to use the stage? That's it. And I was like, totally. oh, you just do your thing. And so, you know, we get on there, we jump on some trends and do that stuff. But then we also just have fun and just create. And it also, uh, I think it's a good outlet for the the humorous side and the lighthearted side of who we are as people because we don't always always take ourselves so seriously you, well, you know can I mean? you can't yeah. the ones that yeah. do i don't think last it's yeah, yeah it's like you got to be able to take the piss out of yourself and laugh at yourself yeah, every yeah. once in a while we're, yeah. plus we're in total control it's like we're we're on record label now so whatever yep. we want to present we just you got the freedom direct to, bro. connection yeah. right there i want to congratulate you the sold out show kicking off the north american tour Woo! Tuesday, March 1st, back, House dude. of Blues, Anaheim. I'd love to plug tickets, but I think it's sold out. Yeah, sold out. Sold out a while ago. Sold out right quick. I was like, yeah, if you want to come to this one, it's, we did an underplay to kick it off because it's like the first show back in a long time for us. And, 
you know, it's just going to, it's going to be a great night. I really can't wait. And, you know, we got special announcements. We're going to announce the album title that day as well, as well as the album release date. Ooh. And so that's coming. So a lot of cool things. We're actually dropping another song of uh, this track called Cut the Line. We just shot a video for it today. And so a lot of stuff happening in the P. Roach world that we're just so excited about. And, you know, the feedback we've been getting about the new music from our fans has been really positive. So it's, it's good. To, it's a good it's a good time to be in a rock and roll band called Papa Roach, so Hell yeah. I'm feeling good about it. And then you guys are bringing out Hollywood Undead and Bad Wolves. How'd you land on those? Um, so we did. We we were out on tour in Europe with uh, Hollywood Undead, and the rug got pulled out from underneath us, and COVID came crashing down. And the tour was it was one of our most successful tours ever um, in Europe. And we're like, we got to do this again. We got along really really well with those cats, and and we go way back with the Bad Wolf. Well, not way back, but We've been knowing the Bad Wolf Cats for a minute, and uh, it just seems like a, a bill that brings every every band's got their own vibe. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not a cookie cutter type type of show. So I, yeah. think it's, I think the fans are going to dig it. Everybody's bringing their own energy to it, and uh, I'm I'm just stoked, man. It's a group. It's a good group of people. It really is, man. We had a lot of fun. We just shot a bunch of content with those cats uh, to promote it for TikTok, and we were like, we just had a great time just chilling with those cats. So it's gonna be fun. Social D on K Rock. I'm gonna act like I dedicated it and planned it for Papa Rush because they were just saying you guys are huge social D fans. Oh, oh man, yeah. my 18th birthday, front row at Slims in San Francisco, watching Social D right on the right on the stage, like leaning on it. Mike Ness's feet are like right here. I'm just like, oh my god, this is so sick. Crazy. Yeah. Mike there, Ness G. Yeah, he's an OG. They're a band where it's like I don't trust you if you don't like them. You know what right? I mean? Yeah, like, dude, it's like it's a like, good you know, barometer so, of like quality of person. Like if you're a social D fan. Yeah, totally. This guy just went in from 314 going Papa Roach Infest. Love that album and that Roxy show three years ago was epic. Oh yeah, we played I, did we, is that where we played the whole record front to back or it was just like no, we did three no, nights at the Roxy. But we did come out and play Last Resort first. Yeah. Which is the first time we'd ever done that. That was yeah, kind of crazy. Yeah, we flipped it on its head, man. Sometimes you got to wig people out. That Roxy show was dope though. Crazy. It was a good time. And then uh 515 says, "Hello, my question for P Roach is that how would you describe this album in comparison with the previous record if you're just tuning into k-rock they've got a new record on the way yep we've got music already out the first single's going crazy and then you yeah. got the new uh, single coming out next week it sounds like yep. so how would you describe this album in comparison with the previous record man it definitely has a lot it's definitely a lot heavier it has a lot more energy than the last record but at the same time it's like it still has the adventurous qualities that like um yeah, crooked we, teeth had we take we take you on a journey on this record but like tobin said i think it's like the conscious effort of focusing like on the riff, like what's the riff, you yeah, know? It's like, yeah. We kind of lost the plot a little bit here. Uh, Definitely. Uh, on a, on that a happens. record before. I wouldn't say lost the plot. It's just like you just experiment, right? It's like it's always this journey of creating and and it's a reflection of where you're at. And like this time we're like, we just want the banger riff. We want the kid in his bedroom on YouTube going, check this out, dude, the new Papa Roach riff. Like, And yeah. now we're seeing kids do reaction videos to the music and it's like kids are getting blown away by it. So. I'm stoked. But it's what's rad about that, it's like paying for it. It's like Tobin, it's like you back in the day listening to the Chili Peppers learning. Oh, yeah. yep. That's what kids are doing now, but on TikTok. It's so yeah, cool, I man. It. I love I love watching these kids play our songs. It's like it's rad. It's crazy. There's so many great musicians out there, man. It's and it's Seriously. exciting for rock and roll, dude. Oh like, yeah. Guitar sales are up. Oh, That's dude, good. dude, through the roof, man, through the roof. We got more of Papa Roach. We got to get to the next song here, but uh, hit us up, 800-520-1067. It's K-Rock. We're taking your questions, by the way. I should say listener questions uh, at 800-520-1067. And 515 wants to know, it's Laney listening tonight on K-Rock. You want to say what's up to Laney? What's up, Laney? How you doing? They want to know, is uh, Kobe doing anything vocally different he hasn't done before on the new Papa Roach record? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a track on the record. Uh, it's one of the, ba- it, we've never written a ballad, like a proper ballad. Scars and, uh, is kind of a ballad. It ish. Okay. But this is like acoustic, broken down, and uh the verses are like in a lower range for me and uh really exploring that part of my voice. And it's just like it's it's borderline almost a little country in a yeah, way. It's got some okay. tumbleweed in there. I yeah, like that. There's I like some tumbleweeds and some dust flying across the scene, and it is like it's I, I mean, without sounding goofy, like this track will make a grown man cry. Like, it's like that emotive. It's just like, it just has that element to it. And I think that venturing into that space, I think our fans are going to love it. It's it's going to open us up to a lot of different fans, I think. Yeah, yeah I'm so excited. Trying some we new, we don't know? have a release date, right? Uh, we have a release date on, we will tell you on Tuesday. First day of the tour, we're announcing the album. We're announcing album release date and the album title. Okay, right on. Yeah, so, you know, fans can get on all of our socials. We're going to pop it on all of our socials that day. and uh, But it's soon, man, and it's exciting. I was like... You finally know, waiting for a child to be born it's like can we just do this already you know but 
Totally. We're the time wait. has come. March 1st. Uh, yep. That's Tuesday. It's crazy. March 1st is yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, first day of tour. You got the uh, Sold Out House of Blues show in Anaheim. Woo! If you want to go, you probably, uh, you know, StubHub or one of those secondhand websites. Yep. Um, and then at Papa Roach, probably on, across all socials, right? That's right. That's, that's right. awesome. Now, we're going to let you ride out in fashion here with Last Resort. Just tell us, I mean, there's so many things you can say. There's a zillion things you have said about this song. But just in closing here on K-Rock tonight, what can you say about Last Resort? <laughs> Timeless, iconic, yeah, it's classic. So like, it never gets old. Bands work their entire career to have a track like this, and it's like we had it on our first track. It's like it blows me away still. You know, Aerosmith got Dream On, Papa Roach, we got Last yeah, Resort. Man. And if you want to check the story behind it, like you were talking earlier, yeah. the Vice, go to Vice on YouTube and the story of Last Resort. It's all there. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a great story. It really was. It was a great moment for us, and it it tells it straight to the point. It's really awesome. So this this track changed my life and many lives out there in the world so here Man. it is p roach last resort <laughs> 